Cadet TV. Mankovich here. Today we have a very special guest. As you all know, I'm a member of Classic Glass in Marietta, Georgia. We always encourage all of our Corvette owners to join your local clubs. They do great charity work and they're a lot of fun. I met Gary at, class, at our Classic Glass Club and he has one of the most interesting stories I've ever heard and is a true car enthusiast. And he wrote a book that I found very interesting and informative and I encourage you, and when we get done here, to uh, give Gary a call and get a copy for yourself. I think you'll enjoy it. But uh, before that, let's have, introduce Gary and uh, let him tell us a little bit about that wonderful book. Well, thank you, John. I uh, have been contemplating writing an autobiography about my life uh, for several years now. Uh, there's two or three kernels or elements that I felt should be shared with uh, family and friends. Um, and I found myself not unique that I wasn't a car guy because there's a lot of car guys out there. But I felt that I knew how to write, I knew how to put paper um, to a manuscript and then ultimately into a book and I thought some of these, these um, uh, elements should be shared. Um, I had, fortunate enough, I had two or three mentors that were very, very influential in my life. Uh, my dad was of prime importance because he was a car guy, didn't have a lot of money. When something broke, he had to fix it. There wasn't a, a store down the street that would put a muffler on or, or uh, fix a tire. He had to do it. In fact, I go way, way back. Uh, to, to a family of uh, five brothers uh, that weren't real mechanically inclined and uh, when they had a date uh, the car wasn't running he, uh, and favors were old uh, he'd get the car somewhat running he'd just adjust the timing or, or uh, leave a, a spark plug loose and, and, uh, or change uh, something and once they realized it was running but not right, favors were paid and he got it running for the date. Um, I have uh, uh, other experiences that, that um, uh, were in, if that influenced my life um, because of schoolmasters, my parents, my grandparents that came out of the Depression of 1929. Um, I still live by a lot of those elements and, and uh, uh, suggestions that were made and, and uh, ingrained in me. Um, I know when to pull a tire off the road. Uh, I've seen many tires blow, and, um, but I like to get useful life. I know when spark plugs need to be pulled out. Um, the, the other element, um, was a tragic event that happened in college. And that really changed the pathway of my career. Uh, I can go into it with detail, but uh, um, I, I like to talk about cars. Um, and that is uh, really a summation of what the book's about. Great. I know I had a lot of fun with it. I know something that everybody can relate to most of the time is your first car. Your first car is always your first love. Um, tell us a little bit about that story. I really enjoyed that. Well, I earned my initial money from paper routes making pot holders. Awesome. Selling magazine subscriptions, um, doing yard work, chauffeuring uh, farmers, retired farmers around to their, their farms in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. And uh, loving Corvettes, I bought a three-speed Corvette, Schwinn Corvette. All right. And um, however, that was not getting me around this little community <laughs> much. And uh, uh, not a lot of girls would like to go dating on a Corvette. Uh, talked my dad into uh, uh, helping me buy or co sign a loan uh, for a 1955 Chevrolet. I thought those were the finest examples around. And I searched Rockford. I searched Belvedere. And I found this 1955 
It was a 210 two-door post with a V8. Uh, that was the first year that Chevrolet put V8s in their automobiles, and uh, I had to have that car. Now, that car was 12 years old, but I had to have it. In fact, it was so old, it was in the back, as far back in the corner of the used car lot as it could be, but I had to have it. And uh, $500 bought it, and I remember I had a couple hundred, and we had to borrow 300, and Dad had a cosign. I have that paperwork yes, yet today. Awesome. Wasn't too long after that, I got it all shined and put new seat covers on it. Uh, two tens had rubber mats. I had to have carpet like the Bel Airs. Uh, so I went to a carpet store and got some carpet and hand fit that, um, that carpet because I had to have carpet. It wasn't too long after that, I got it all shined, and I noticed there was a film on the back trunk deck. And little did I know she was worn out. And um, so that was some additional cost. Um, had to use dad's garage, and we attempted to lift the engine and transmission out of it, and the garage almost came in. Oh, goodness. Um, so we. We put it back together again and had someone uh, uh, down the street rebuild it. And it wasn't too long after that the power glide transmission went out. And got that fixed. And it wasn't too long after that I fell in love with a 1956 Bel Air turquoise and white convertible. That car was also worn out. But I had a buddy that was very mechanically inclined one weekend. We put both cars in the garage, we pulled the engines and the transmission out, and we just swapped them. So that's kind of my story about the first, the, my first car. I love it. It's always fun to have that car that you can work on and learn from uh, and get to enjoy. So. Well, it was unique because I mentioned earlier that it was a, uh, one of the first small block V8s. Mm -hmm. It was so rare that it did not have an oil filter. And that was part of the reason why the engine was, was worn out. So my mechanic put in a six-cylinder uh, oil filter that sat on top of the, the manifold. Interesting. Yeah. Very, yeah. Uh, we just really know that that was a, I wish I had taken some numbers down, but at 18, 19, you don't care about numbers. Right. Yeah. But it was uh, later on in life I learned how rare that, that automobile was. Um, one of the other stories is that uh, one of your first special order cars that you had an opportunity to, to work with. and Tell us a little bit about that story. Well, that story is very interesting because uh, in 1976, I did have a, a little money. Um, and I had followed Corvettes around since 1953, their inception. And I thought this was a good time to, uh, to have a Corvette single, no kids, and just having fun. Special ordered it in uh, the Fawn, which was very popular back in the day. And I had stipulated on the contract that this car be perfect. And it came in, I went down, inspected it, and almost accepted it. And I walked around it one more time and I found an eyelash that had been painted into the, um, one of the front fenders, right at the crown. And I told the salesman, I, I said, this, you could buff it out, but I said, I, I'm going to know that there was an eyelash there. And I said, it just can't, can't satisfy. So he said, well, I'll sell it. You know, that won't be a problem. And at that point, I thought, well, I better, I better uh, look at uh, another one. So I special ordered 1977 Camaro LT, nice. same color. And uh, that was a great car. And um, so those are a couple of my first ordered cars. Very neat cars too. Uh, the, the Chevy and the Camaro and the Bel Air, very, very nice collection of cars. You could tell you were a car guy right from the start. <laughs> so, folks, um, you notice we have some props sitting in front of us here. And when we come back, we're going to uh, give you a little show and tell about the uh, information we have here for you. Gary, we appreciate your time. Y'all, don't forget Gary's book, A Pathway Along the Back Roads. It's a really, obviously not a huge long book, a lot of fun, really some neat information. Probably bring back some memories from your childhood. Um, and you can get that book by calling Gary direct 
emailing us here at the show at john at biovet.net. However you'd like, we'll make sure that you have the opportunity to get a copy. We are here with Gary Pipple from Classic Glass and a good friend of BioVets. And as I had said earlier, we have some stuff to show. Um, Gary, I know that you've brought some of our uh, headlamps and some of our um, spark plugs. Tell us a little bit about that. When I was following my dad around, um, it really didn't matter where and what products he bought, just as long as they would fit in his old Hudson's and his old uh, uh, Nash's. And, uh, but to me, it was very important that if it was a GM product, that I put GM parts into it. Uh, most every car that I bought, I would make sure that I got the AC Delco headlamps. This happens to be a power beam, which came out in, I think, 1977. Um, I also buy a complete set of spark plugs for every new car I buy. Uh, I had a very bad experience in that 1956 Bel Air. I was headed out to uh, Arizona and uh, engine started running rough and uh, cooled it off and noticed that the, one of the porcelain uh, parts of the spark plug had cracked and uh, I learned from a very, very early age. To this day, I still have a toolbox with some of the required parts. Not that these new plugs would ever crack, but I guess you learn by, uh, by uh, you know, stories that you learned early on. So I just carry an extra plug and, uh, and, a, and a full set in the garage, just in case. And it's a good example for everybody to understand not only how your car works, but what it may need. Having those parts readily available on a longer trip, especially if you're buying a classic car, really, really important. And something, you're right, you don't think of in today's cars. So, really great advice. I would go with uh, new radiator hoses, uh, new fan belts every other year back in the old days. And I would take the old ones off and slip into the trunk just in case I would have a problem with a new one. It's awesome. just tricks that you learn and you don't want to be caught on the side of the road. Right. Now, I do have to, we have a picture here. I'm going to um, grab real quick because this is a very rare car. And part of the Pipple family is a 2013 Supersonic Blue Grand Sport Heritage Package. And remember I said join the clubs? Here's why. See that beautiful airplane? One of our club members had us go so we could take pictures with our cars and the planes. So there's benefits to everything. I noticed we got some, some rare stuff here, some collectibles with the Grand Sport and the Collector's Edition Corvettes. And most people know the Z06 is a current race car. Well, the Z06, mm -hmm. as you'll know, started in 1963 was mm -hmm. the first one. And you have a really neat collectible here with a 63 and the first C5 Z06. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me a little bit about these. A few years ago, I fell in love with a 1982 collector edition. And uh, it was a one owner car with approximately 5,000 miles on it, had a lot of spare parts. And these parts came with it all wrapped in, in uh, special tissue. I never used them, but I thought these things have got to be very rare. And I just kind of hold on to them. It's a great beautiful. idea. And they're heavy. That is Oh wow, yeah. That is a very heavy <coughs> extension. And that's one year car that. too. One year collector. Correct. Mm -hmm. So and I noticed that we do have the fiftieth anniversary cars, uh, two thousand and three being the fiftieth anniversary of Corvette. Uh, a very beautiful car, as we all know. And tell me a little bit about these. This is the um, the ninety eight Motor Trend Car of the Year collector and a, uh, the first ZR1, correct? ZR1, and that is a 1995, followed up with 1998. Very, Good. very rare cars. Yes. Today would be very rare. But Motor Trend thought enough about those cars that they would recognize it. Great. Mm -hmm. Now, Gary will be uh, doing some book signings <laughs> and such all across the uh, 
States. And uh, if you have any questions, always feel free to holler here at Biovet, john at biovet.net. And we'll also supply the information so you can contact Gary directly. We appreciate your time today here at Biovet. If you have any questions, ideas, or suggestions, always feel free. We'll see you on the road.